All right, so today I'm pretty sure many of you have been watching the Amber Geiger trial. And last video we posted was just a standalone video showing that she was found guilty, but we said we wanted to wait for the sentence of the particular trial. We wanted to wait because usually it's, if you don't get you on the not guilty, they try to get you on the sentence some way, somehow, because you know, when it comes to black folks, it's just, you know, we don't really get justice in this country, no matter what happens to us, whether it's a police officer or whether it's, you know, Joe public kills a black person is not the same. And we'll get to talking about all of that. So I want to play the first video. I'm not going to try to take too much of your time. I know your time is precious. I know you have a lot of things to do. Some people just got off of work. Shout out to you. Um, if anyone decides for any reason to like to donate to us today, uh, we'll have a cash app link that will be popping up in the chat. Maybe every few minutes. Um, I would prefer you do it that way than super chat because YouTube takes about 30% of whatever you guys donate. So you can do the super chat. We greatly appreciate it. So let's get to the first video and we're going to break down a whole lot of things here when it comes to not only Amber Geiger, uh, the Dallas police department itself and the internal things they have going on. Um, the issue with that, I know y'all talk about in the chat, I've seen it and I'll get to that too, but let's go ahead and just play the first video of the verdict. So just, just let me get to it. Like I said, I'm all on it. There we go. The jury having reached a verdict, I will now uh, announce it. We, the jury, find unanim we, the jury, find unanimously that the defendant did not cause the death of Botham John while under the immediate influence of sudden passion arising from an adequate cause and assess the defendant's punishment at 10 years imprisonment in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. In addition, we assess a fine of zero dollars and it's signed by the presiding juror uh, would you like to have the jury poll? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is there any legal reason why this sentence should not now be imposed? Not at all. It is therefore the order, judgment, and de decree of the court that you be taken by the sheriff of Dallas County and safely transported by her to an agent or representative of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. And there you shall be confined until your sentence is discharged. Your sentence will begin today and you will receive credit for any back time that you had. So as you heard, ladies and gentlemen, Amber Geiger received 10 years in jail. Some of you know, it may be some of your family members. They could be locked up right now. Didn't kill a single person at all. And they got more time for some drugs in their pocket that Amber Geiger received for walking into a innocent man's home, watching some football, eating ice cream, she walked into his apartment with her racist self. And we know all the text messages and she wanted a, a racist dog. She was talking egregious about Martin Luther King. She was talking about black officers, that racist white woman. Okay. Walked into this black man's house and killed him. And all she got was 10 years. Now you remember Muhammad Noor, that brother, the Somali cop, he got 12 years. He got more time than Amber Geiger. And actually Muhammad Nora's story sounds more accurate than anything that Amber Geiger done. You get what I'm saying? I mean, it is ridiculous how this case played out. Now everyone was happy about the murder charge. That's fine. And let me tell you about Texas law in the state of Texas with that 10 years, all she has to do is a nickel and be on parole. I will repeat that again. All she has to do is five years. She can get paroled out. She can go back to her life and be on parole for the next five years. She can get married if she want, have her some kids if she want, whatever she chooses to do, but she can get back out and live her life after doing five years. Now you heard the judge say whatever time she spent in, so let's say the five years minus every time she's been in jail. I don't know. So let's say she's been in there six months, eight months. We don't know how long she's been in. That's going to be taken out. So let's say she's been in there a good amount of time. 
she could possibly do four years in jail, get some good time in and be right back out for murdering an innocent man in his house. It lets you know, see this system. I thought she was going to get 15 to 20. Cause that's just usually what you kind of get on that, but she got less than a 15 to 20. And I was quite shocked when I heard this 10 years, you understand if you're on that jury and you know, Texas law, I would think, okay, 10 years. All she's going to do is five. Nah, she got to at least do 20. <laughs> that been my mindset. I said, you know what? 40 years that she got to do at least do 20 before she even think about it. Now, you know, good and well, let's call it what it is. If that Dallas police officer would have been a black officer was sexting another cop on the phone where she wasn't paying attention to where she was going. And she went to, uh, Brad, whatever Brad's name would be right. And shot Brad that was watching NFL football and killed him. Do you think that black woman would have got 10 years? She would have got the whole 99 years, 99. We all know this. And I saw people in the chat when they saw that the time that she received, they said, man, you see the clear double standard. Yes. It's a clear double standard. And we need to talk about some reality in this country. And I'm going to talk about it, whether you like it or not. I support the fight for reparations and this country owe that. But at the end of the day, we can get our reparations tomorrow. It's not going to change the fundamental way that this country handles black people. We will just be black people with a little bit more money in our pocket. And yet the fundamental things not going to change. And I can tell you, it's actually going to get worse because they're going to get extremely salty that we will receive something. You understand? See y'all can say whatever y'all want to say about me and say, Oh, you want to talk about Africa. Uh, I got an Africa plan. Okay. Because I see the writing on the wall in this country. When a black man sitting in his house and he gets killed and the woman who did it don't get no time at all. And she can get out in five years. The system is working exactly like he was meant to work. It, it did it. This brother wasn't out there committing crimes, or doing nothing wrong. He did everything what somebody would think is right. Go to school, you know, get his degree. He's working as an accountant. You know, he goes to the church house. I mean, nothing bad about him that you could say. He didn't have no criminal record. They could dirty him with, you notice that they couldn't do anything. He had the perfect situation and they still really didn't get this man no justice at all. And as this country going along, as you looking at, and the reason why I keep talking about the Democrat party so much is because I see the writing on the wall, even with them, black people have invested almost 60 years of their votes into that party and look at what they're doing constantly to black folks. They have set a policy to say, forget y'all every last one of y'all and other groups aren't coming in caring about the black struggle, the black story. They coming in to, to get their position by any means necessary. If that's a team of white supremacy against black folks, that's what they would do. They don't care. You heard that Martin Rivera guy, all the racism that he was doing and talking about the black officers too. And we get into the conversation about black officers in a minute. But black people's position in America, you don't have time to be sitting up here, uh, oh, you do this and I don't like you and you're Pookie and Ray Ray and I'm educated and, and I'm not this person and I'm Caribbean and I'm Nigerian and I don't like them black Americans. At the end of the day, when Amber Geiger shows up, she's coming up to kill. What did she say in that trial? She said that when she pulled that gun, she intended to kill both of them, John. She didn't care about his Caribbean descent. She didn't care if, if he was black American or called himself ADOS, didn't care about that. Didn't care if he was from Lagos, Nigeria or Accra, Ghana or Nairobi, Kenya or Johannesburg, South Africa or wherever you from. She didn't care about that. When she came in there, she killed him. That's why I'm not for all that black folks saying I'm missing. I'm not you guys. At the end of the day, it don't matter what you are. In the system of racism, white supremacy, we're all one Negro, all of us. It don't matter what you, you a doctor, lawyer, no matter what you is, Pookie and Ray Ray, it don't matter. You can even be the president. You can be even half black. You can say, Hey, I got a white parent. I ain't like them. They don't care. They'll kill you and shoot you too. Then we have black folk 
that goes on the side with this system. Everybody will say, oh, look, the judge, Tammy Kemp. Oh, wow, it's a black woman. And then you find out that the white police union in Dallas, because there are three of them, there's a white police union, a black police union, and a Latino police union. There's three. Why do we have three police unions based on race in Dallas? Let you know the problems they have in Dallas with the police department, and yet the white police union backed that judge. Let's talk about that judge in this case. Right before they went to deliberate on the murder charge, she said, well, you know, the castle doctrine. Now, let me explain you what the castle doctrine is in Texas. The castle doctrine is if you used to break into my home and you have to actually cross the plane of my home, of course, I couldn't like go and try to get you or shoot you or something in the yard. No, I'll be charged for that. But if you break into my home at night or whatever, and I shoot you for whatever reason or beat you or whatever I do, I'm not going to get charged because you came into my castle. If it was a business of mine and you broke into my business and I, you know, defended my business, defended myself, whatever, and something happened to you, then I'm okay. If you try to break into my car, like carjack me, whatever, I have a way to protect myself. I do that. Then I won't be charged for that. That's the castle doctrine, ta- castle law. The castle law is good. I'm not against the castle law at all. You shouldn't be breaking into nobody's house, business, car, etc. So I don't have an issue with that. What this judge tried to do, cause see, she tried to throw Amber Geiger a bone. When she told that jury about that castle law, they don't apply to Amber Geiger because it wasn't her house. So the defense tried to say, well, castle law. And, and, and she thought it was her house, but it wasn't. And the jury was confused about that. Like, what do you mean by the castle law? Now they rejected that because it wasn't her house. It didn't fit the definition. Then the second thing this judge allowed was to add the stipulation about what it was done under passion, which they had nothing to do with it either before the sentencing. Right? So this judge was trying to help Amber Geiger as well. Don't think she was just, Oh, well, um, you know, she was just hard on her. No, no, no. So this whole case is screwed up. You know, I saw too many people giving her props. They don't get that judge no props because why is it that the white police union is backing her up? Why? That doesn't seem, seem right to me because usually the white police union is not going to back up somebody that's going to be uh, equal in the area of enacting the law. So I thought that was interesting. So Amber Geiger got sentenced to her 10 years. I have a cousin that when he was 17 years old, he got sentenced to jail. Now, let me give you a backstory. My cousin didn't kill nobody. He didn't rape nobody. He didn't shoot nobody. He didn't beat nobody. He was wrong place, wrong time. And he was sentenced to 22 years in jail, prison, 22 years. First time offense, not a career problem. He was playing football. He was a senior in high school when he got arrested and he got 22 years. Amber Geiger killed a man and she got less time than my cousin. That's what pissed me off about this in this country, black folks. It is clearly a racial caste system. It's clear. And if you don't understand the racial hierarchy in America, then you better get it. First part of it is you have white folks. Okay. They're at the top of that pyramid in the white folks pyramid. You got Jewish people, the white LGBTQ community and any other white subgroups. They're in that section. So they're at the top. Okay. I'm trying to give you the system underneath that would be Asians and all these subgroups in there. You understand that's where they at. They're way above black people. Then underneath them, I probably would add the Arab groups underneath the Asians underneath them. Probably would add the, um, immigrants who are of Hispanic descent, not uh, Americans. Then it could, because see, they getting some, some things that we aren't getting. Then you're getting, you know, of course, Hispanics right there. Then you will get underneath that black immigrants. Then underneath that, I would say black 
American people. We're way at the bottom of whatever the caste system is. Okay. So nothing is trickled down economics and everything when it comes to justice. It happens in that manner, period. Now you said black, that means the black LGBT because trust me, the white LGBTQ and the black ones is two sort of different situations. That's why it's, oh, I don't know why we even get involved with that situation, but that's something else. I mean, if I can take my time and draw it up, get somebody to draw it up for me, I would get it done. But that racial caste system in America still go on till this day. Understand? It goes on. Black people are at the bottom in America. It don't matter how much money you make. It don't matter your position. You're at the bottom. That's why I don't like to see black people acting all brand new with each other. I'm better than you because I'm from uh, Nigeria. I'm better than you because I'm from the Caribbean. I'm better than you because I'm from Maine. None of y'all are better than nobody. Because when you come to this country, you're at the bottom. Period. That's where you're at. You don't believe me? Wait till Amber Geiger show up at your apartment when you don't have a door locked and something happened to you. Then let me see how many years Amber Geiger get for killing you if you were so important. Because we know anytime the roles were versed, something happens every single time. Every single time. It didn't take them long to lock up Muhammad Noor, did it? And that white woman got 20, was it, how much? Was it 20 million? I think that's what she got. And I'm mistaken, y'all correct me. The largest settlement have ever been seen were one of those cases. Black folks normally get maybe about three, four million, five million on average. The white woman gets 20 million. And Muhammad Noor, you know, he locked up. None is back to blue anything. Black people, we have to understand our position in America. We have to understand that. Money not going to solve our position. It may help it a little bit, but it's not going to solve it. Now you may say, I'm, you know, in, in, the time, in the times you hear me say Captain Black America, it's not that I'm trying to take a stab at you or I hate you or nothing. I just see Amber Geiger and what she can do to you. I can see what George Zimmerman do to you, okay? And like, why am I going to be fighting for that? I, that's why I say my mindset is bigger. My mindset is like expansive. I say, listen, I have a position here as much as I could at least, but I got to see what African nations I want to go to and set something up. And some of y'all get mad when I say that or other black people say that, but you're going to wait till the, till, till the Titanic is going down uh, after it hit the iceberg before you be looking up, why y'all do, what about me? You should have been setting yourself up. You see what they're doing, opposition. Listen, I talked to older black people and the older black people that lived during the time of the civil rights movement and before said it's worse today than it was back then when they went through it. That's bad. And considering we have all this money, we have all these resources, we have all the access and it's worse on us today. You're fighting each other today and for what? We're not even benefiting off anything. We don't benefit off our talent, like basketball, football. We don't benefit off our music. You know, everyone else owns that. You understand? Like, what are we benefiting off of ourselves? And then you allow other people to tell you you're racist to want to benefit off of your own things. You're racist if you want to have your own schools. You're racist. You let everybody tell you something because the biggest thing that we have as black folks, which I'm about to show you next, is that we want validation. We want to be validated by everybody, especially white folks. We have a love for white people more than life itself. And the next clip I'm going to show you is going to be proof of this. Seriously. When they picked black people to say, hey, we want to enslave them. I see why I had to accept that today. I see why they picked us to enslave us. I seen it. I seen when they gave us that white Jesus, the effects of that. I got to see it today. And I was screaming at my phone. My little girl would say, daddy, what's wrong with you? Because I was screaming at what I saw today. I thought the verdict was bad. I thought it was horrible. But the next clip I'm about to show y'all, I'm going to get to that. Prior to that, and I'm, let, me, let me play this one clip. You remember the chick from yesterday? Let me, let me play this real quick. Because, you know, this is black folks. Hold on. When I seen that, I, hold on, let me, let me, let me, let me, I was like, are you serious? 
I mean, let me She's, do this for y'all. I gotta ride this back. Give me a second. Everybody come to the courtroom. We appreciate it. Head out. I thought I had it. I thought I had it set up for y'all. Give me a quick second. Hold on. We doing we doing this live. There we go. All right. This this, this is black folks right here. This, this, this is what we want to do. We we want to we want to stroke the hair of the woman that murdered black people. I thought this was bad yesterday. I thought this was so bad. What? Okay. So, so we, we see that then today after the verdict with the victim statement, Brant John, the brother of both of them gets on the, the stand and I want you to listen to this. <laughs> oh my God. L listen, listen to this. I don't want to say twice or for the hundredth time what you've or how much you've taken from us. I think you know that. But I just... I hope you go to God with all what, all the guilt, all the things, the bad things you may have done in the past. Each and every one of us may have done something that we're not supposed to do. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. And. I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not gonna say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see, I, I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not gonna say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. That's sad. That is sad, bro. Oh my. 
like I said, when I saw it in real time, I'm, I'm calm, a little bit more calm than what I was earlier. Some of you may be the first time that you've seen that, but I don't know, you know, what she told him at all. I don't know. Um, in, in her, you know, cause she whispered something in his ear, but you know, so let's, let's recap. So this is the woman that killed your brother. This is the woman. Hold on. Make sure you put him up here. The woman that killed your brother. That's him right there. Both of them, John killed your brother. And you're in there saying, I love you. I forgive you. I thought the forgiveness part, I said, Oh Lord, here we go. Okay. But then he took the cake and asked the judge, asked the judge, could I go and give her a hug? <sighs> Once again, these people knew what they were doing when they made black people their slaves. Cause we haven't been enslaved in a very long time. And yet we act the same way. Like we were on the plantation fields of America, the Caribbean, you know, in Brazil, we still mentally enslaved. I mean, you know, I see y'all doing the coon train. I mean, that dude that won the coon train award for, I think for the 21st century so far, I, I, I'm sorry, look, you killed my brother. I got some choice words for you. And it's sure not going to be nothing with no love and forgiveness for you. You, you killed my brother eating ice cream, uh, chick. Like, what could I even say to that? Like, what could I say? I mean, it, it's, it's sick. It's wrong. <laughs> and then, oh, he ain't the only one with all this hugging. I don't know if y'all seen this. Just give me a second. If I can put up this other picture here. Um, the judge. Now, how many judges, you know, go hug convicted murderers. Do you know that? That's the judge right there. Hugging Amber Geiger. Did you guys know about that? What's going on, man? Am I living in the twilight zone? Is that what I'm living? I mean, is this some sort of alternate reality where black people are hugging murderers you right it can't be real you look i wish it wasn't real but this is the judge how many white judges have you seen hug black folk how many they say, oh it's gonna be okay tyrone it's gonna be all right Oh Lord. None. I'm seeing the chat. Everybody saying none, none. I said, I need a big, I, I can't wait. Look, I cannot wait to, to our trip to Kenya. I need a break. I can't with black folks. Sometimes I just can't with y'all. And I'm not talking about y'all in the chat. I'm talking about that mentality because they aren't the only ones that would do that. Unfortunately. You remember with Dylan Roof? You remember that? To the courtroom? Dylan Roof went in that church house, killed nine black folk. And what's the first thing they say? I forgive you. And Dylan Roof was sitting up there looking at with a blank stare like. But when it comes to black people, we don't want to hug black people. We don't want to forgive black people. We don't want to say black people, I love you. Black people, I don't want you to go to jail. We don't say that about other black people. We want black people to go to jail. We have no forgiveness, no love for black people. We don't speak to black people. We don't want to help black people. Oh, but we're ready to cut each other's throat. But when it comes to Amber Geiger and her ilk, oh yeah, you love them. You forgive them. You, you want to console them. You want to stroke their hair. I mean, come on black people. We got to talk about ourselves here for a minute. Not Amber Geiger. We can talk about ourselves. Something wrong with us as a collective group of people. Something's wrong. Nobody else does that but us. Nobody. Matter of fact, right now, there's other black folks on social media right now, mad that she's going to jail. Feeling like that dude saying she should got a lesser charge. These are black folks. No other group does that. No other group is against their own people like we are. 
You talk about Africa, what are you going over there for Africa for? You don't hear white folks say, what you going to the UK for? What you going to go to the Europe for? They ain't me. Like they all, that's why they all it powerful because they all click up together. They got NATO, they do business together. They work together to maintain their situation. But us, we don't want to click up and maintain anything, but we up here hugging Amber Geiger and stroking her hair and making sure Amber's okay as she murdered a brother. They didn't do anything wrong, but watch TV and eat some ice cream in his house. His house. Man, I wouldn't want a brother like that at all. I would not want a weak worm in a dust brother like that. And this is why a lot of black folks say, I don't want nothing to do with these church houses because he's saying black churches teach you to be the same weak, docile, worm of the dust, black folk. And that makes black men look bad too. Because if your men is up here hugging murderers that killed your brother, what kind of example that's going to be for the women and the children in our community? There's no example. You're sick and tired of that crap, bro. Like I was just like, I was just so angry today. Uh, Y'all see me looking out cause I'm fooling with another, another computer right here. I was just sick and tired of this today. Tired. Then on top of that, we have the police and then pull something up here on my phone so I can make sure I'm looking at what you guys are looking at. The police itself have an issue with the department. They, do you know that the Dallas police department have three counted three different unions, ladies and gentlemen, do you know that the give me a turn that down. So I see what you guys are talking about. So they have three different police unions. They have a white union. Okay. I know you see that. I mean that that's, that's sad, right? But that, but that's black folk. That's black folk right there. Now the white union that backed up that judge that's hugging, you know, Amber there, they're called the Dallas police association. That's the white union. Now you're all supposed to be police officers, but yet you separating yourself in unions. The Dallas police department has a major race issue going on. Obviously we saw that with, um, in the case. So you have the Dallas police union. That's the white union. Okay. Then the next union I'm going to show you guys is the black union. So you have the black police association, greater Dallas. That's the black union. And then the third union here is the national Latino law enforcement organization. That one is set up in Dallas right there. Now the same union, the police chief in Dallas is a black woman. That particular union was trying to get that black woman removed. You understand? Was trying to get her removed from her job. They said it's not enough Latinos on the police department and they don't have enough representation, but they've never said that when the department had a white, you know, person that was leading it. They never go complain and say there's, there's not enough, uh, uh, there's too many whites on the force and we need more Latinos. But when it comes to black people, we automatically target it. And I'm going to talk about that. And actually my wife gave me a great article where I can really home in on what's a lot of the issue that's coming from south of that border and why they importing all the attitudes in here. I mean, it's a great article. She gave me and explains everything and, and I, I can't wait to get to it. But this is what's going on there in Dallas. So Amber Geiger only has to do five years, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Just five. The brothers hugging the brothers is, 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 oh my God, man. I just, <sighs> we have no loyalty, no loyalty. Names don't, do you know how sorry that is? You don't have loyalty to your own family. Forget the community, your own family, your own blood brother. You have no loyalty to him. You rather be hugging. Think about it. The last minutes of both of John's life, she's running around worrying about her job. What's going to happen to her while this brother is bleeding out. You understand? And he's not even my brother except just being part of the community, but he's his blood brother. I'm imagining him bleeding out and she's running around texting. We're talking about she effed up and all the things that she done. And she does nothing for him. Didn't like try to help him, assist him, do anything. And then you get yourself up there looking lost, 
Let, let me put the first picture back up there. Him. If you look into his eyes, let me, let me get back to that picture. Look at his eyes. Just stare in his eyes. Oh, look, nowhere else. Look in his eyes. His eyes look like the, 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 that movie Get Out. Did y'all get to him or something? Did y'all rub that, that dog on a, a T uh, thing that that white woman was rubbing? I mean, he looked like Get Out. He, he, he looked lost. He don't even look like he's existed. Do you see what I see? I mean, black, like one person said in the chat, black men been put in jail for weed 20 some odd years. Crack rock 30 years. But she get to get off. But see, this is racism, white supremacy, the way it is. But y'all think it's a joke in the game. Some of y'all. And I'm telling you, yes, we can get our reparations tomorrow, but that's not going to fix this system. This system has to be fundamentally changed. And this system was built to be anti-black. This system was built on a racial caste system. This system was built that if you're white, everything is right. That's the way this system was built. So when I go to Africa, I get a little relief from some of this. That's why I can't wait to go. I can't wait. And the people that's coming with us, I can't wait for you to come to, and I'm going to point some things out to you and you're going to catch it and see what I'm talking about. Are they perfect over there? Hell no. But it's not this going on. Not like to this point. And these people now in this country are showing how hateful they are to us, how venomous they are to us. And the bad part is now I'm dealing with white supremacists here. Now you got people being imported in and hate us too. That's the bad part. The white supremacist says here, okay, I it's fine. We, we know who they are, but you ain't got some new ones coming in and they clicking up with them against us. Convicted murderers get hugged by black folk. Black judges hug convicted murderers. I don't know what to say guys. I, I just, I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. You know, I, I, yes, I'm sick to my stomach too, just as much as you're sick to your stomach. That's why I say, you know what? I can't even do a video. I'm just going to go live and talk about it. I said, I don't even have the time today. Yeah. So that's the ending of that story. You know, I don't, I don't know, like I said, and I could be wrong because you know, as long as I've been living, there's always somebody that tops the next person. So for me, this is about the biggest shucking and jiving event I've ever seen in my life. I, I thought I seen some bad ones, but that took the cake. But usually going to be another black person that's going to try to top him because it's like, you know, Hey, he can't have the, have the crown. I need to have the crown. Or you say they, they, they seem like they were acting or they were bucking. They, I, I don't know. And look, in the moment I seen that happen in real time, but all that hugging and carrying on, I said, watch that be front page, everything. And sure enough, I went to, to the, the, the media outlets front page. He hugging Amber Geiger. I said, <sighs> I said, this is why other people don't respect us. This is why other people don't respect our lives. They don't respect nothing we got to say because we do crap like that. I see people of other races saying, what the hell is he doing? And I'm sitting up there just shaking my head and say, wow, all these different groups of people even saying the same thing. Like this is what is he doing? Why is he hugging this convicted murder that killed his brother? And he's doing all this in front of his mama. If you don't do respect your brother, at least respect your mother. And you don't do that. I'm telling y'all this Amber Geiger case is, is going to have repercussions for the black community. I'm telling you that little stunt that he pulled is going to have a repercussion too in the black community. Watch what I'm telling you. Watch.
<laughs> yeah, I saw people saying that it was happy yesterday. She convicted. It's crazy how and then the white white uh, anchors like, well, everyone was so happy yesterday, but now today people aren't happy about the verdict. Yeah, yesterday they were quiet. They weren't saying much about the verdict yesterday, but then today when they got the sentence, they, oh, they talking now. Oh yeah, she got ten years, and look how how loving they are. Let me tell you something, black people. You can't love the devil out of people. It don't work. If that's the case, Satan himself wouldn't exist. You try to do all this loving for how many years now? It, it just amazes me. I, I go back to that. You have all this love for, for people that have historically done things to you and you don't have no love for your own. If you love me like you love Amber, man, you do you realize how great we will be as a people? how much we can accomplish, how much our children can be protected, educated, etc. If we loved each other, y'all have tribal warfare, tribal beefs in Africa. We have tribal beefs here. We tribal everywhere we go. Can't stay in each other. You not me. I'm not you get out of here in South Africa. You're attacking each other. As I stated before, but then Meghan Markle show up and then Prince Harry's, Oh my God, look at him. But other black people, you ready to d destroy businesses. So it's not, it's not just black folks here. Or you could use, it's not just the Caribbean black folks. It's a problem worldwide that we have. How about you talking about loving some, but can we have a tour? And, and then we ain't talking when people always mentioning black love. They always mention in relationships. Can we have a true black love tour? We talking about black people loving black people, period. Not just in the guise of relationships or sex or having kids. I'm talking about just black people loving each other. Can we t start that? Can, can, can we see other black people hugging other black people? Like this guy is just hugging a murderer, a convicted murderer. Can we see that? How, how can we see videos of other black people, another black woman stroking another black woman's hair and consoling her like we've seen in this video. Can we see that? Can we see some crying for black people, some sympathy for other black people instead of the, 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 the cussing and the fussing and fighting and maiming and shooting and jealousy and envy of each other. We give each other the worst and for no reason. I mean, literally we live in a twilight zone. We talk about that bull I always joke with y'all about, but you're the bull too. That's the second part of that bull. You're the bull because you see black people and your eyes turn red too. Not just them. No, nah, don't start that St. Lucia hold this L. No, we all holding it. We all holding it because there's so many times that we have as quote unquote black Americans said the same thing to a police. I forgive you this and that and the third. Come on now. Don't start all that mess. I'm not going to allow it. It is a global problem that black people have with that. You hate each other, but love everybody else. Cause Amber Geiger didn't know nothing about him being from St. Lucia. She didn't know anything. She just saw some Negro in her, in her supposed apartment and kill it. They don't care about that when they're ready to kill you, where you from your neighborhood, whether you educated Pookie and Ray Ray or whatever. They don't care about that mess. I told y'all y'all to stop all that mess in the grand scheme of things. They don't care. If someone's doing something wrong, I told you, check them. No matter if they from here or wherever, where, check them. I get it. I'll check them with you. I just posted a whole video about that word of kata. I'll check them all day. But when it comes to the system, race and white supremacy, a Nigerian is no different than me. When they come in to do something, when Amber shows up. But I'm not, but see, see y'all good at that. Y'all good at, at trying to that I'm not them. They not me. Forget them. F them. We, we good at doing that to each other, but why don't we do that to Amber and her ilk? We don't do that. 
We got so much heat for each other. How, how about we love each other like we love an Amber there? Hugging Amber, stroking Amber's hair. How, how about when we do that to each other for a change? You know, I have other, I have sisters have told me they can't even work with other black women because of jealousy with each other. But yet I saw two black women consoling a white woman that murdered a black man. Brothers can't work with each other either. Sometimes I'm watching a black man go console a, a white woman, but won't console another black woman when she needs consoling. Let's call that what it is. We'd be on this platform, YouTube attacking each other all day. Oh, I don't like him. I don't like her. I, they, her hair, her this, her that, her that. We'll do that all day using, using a, the, a worldwide platform like YouTube to go at each other. We do it online too. And then if, and if a brother or sister show love to each other, you a simp or you a pick me. That's, this, this is, this is the mindset black folks have. You a simp if you try to show some sort of respect and credence for black women, you a pick me if you are a black woman trying to love and respect a black man. Look at the mindset that black folks have. But you won't say simp and what well, you won't say simp about that dude. You won't say pick me about no about nobody else when it comes to them folks. You won't say that. It's this backwards thinking that we got to have. And that's why I'm saying sometimes you need to step out of America for just for a few days and really assess the country we live in, assess how we think. Sometimes you can't really assess it until you step out. I'm telling you from experience, I couldn't even assess it until I went out to Ethiopia last year and I sat in that hotel room and it just dawned on me some of the oppression and, and, and the problems that we have. And literally we think just like the racist white supremacist, we think just like him because he has infused his mind into us, but he's infused his mind into us for us to hate each other. It didn't really dawn on me how deep it was until I was in Africa. It didn't dawn on me how oppressive this system is actually to everybody, but we don't realize it. how micromanaged we are. We don't really have freedom like talking about. I didn't really get that until I went to Africa. Now this family got to move on. They have to. And I think they go try to do a civil case and, and hopefully, you know, they can do something there, but both of them, John, unfortunately, and I wish I could say this, but both of them, John will not be the last brother. Only I could tell black people, lock your doors, make sure your door is closed and lock them. Cause not all the time the person coming to kill you is a criminal. It could be a police officer that's sexting on the phone and not paying attention and walking to your place thinking it's theirs, kill you. And then all they can do is a nickel and get right back out of jail. And probably do less than that based on good time. She's going to be in protective custody because she can't be in general population. Cause they, they, they all know they ain't gonna happen. So she's going to be in protective custody the whole time that she's there. So can we can make a commitment or make you, you make a commitment to try to have more love for black people. Can, can we make a small commitment to say, I'm going to try to encourage a brother or sister when I see him. Can we make that a commitment? Does not all black people are perfect. I get it. Not all of them are, but can we make that commitment? Because we got to start fixing ourselves. We got to start loving ourselves and loving each other. Not just in the guise of relationships. Cause that's what we always talk about. You mentioned black love, but we need to love each other just on a, regular basis, just greeting each other as brothers, greeting each other as sisters, because this love we got for these people is, is not normal. Y'all, I know it's, we talk about Stockholm syndrome, but no, to me, it's God-like worship. It's past Stockholm syndrome. It's God-like worship. And y'all do this all the time, and we don't accept that. We worship, well, listen, when you're looking for one group of people's validation 
over everyone else? Why that one group of people? I mean, I can understand if you're a people pleaser and you want to please everybody, but you always make sure your validation comes from that one group. Why? Because you have a mentality that you worship them as your God. And it shows just like these videos. They knew what they were doing when they were, when they replaced the real Jesus with that white one and told you that was the Jesus. Cause they knew you was going to worship them. And in your churches, you still do it. That's why I can't go to your churches. I can't. If I walk in there, I told you, and I see that yeah, you can invite me to your church. Hey, I'm not mean. I'll go. But if I walk in there and I see that picture of that white Jesus and you say, why you, why you just walked out? I say, I refuse to be anywhere. That idol is that because that is an idol of white supremacy. And that's why we screwed up as a black people. We got a church on every corner and, and, and we don't benefit anything from any of these churches, but they on every corner though. Remember that church back in the Bible, to, Bible back in slavery times was used to pacify the slave. Nat Turner realized it and then he revolted and fought back, but it was used to keep you docile. And that what you saw is more docile, weak worm of the dust. And that's how they especially want us as black men, because if black men are that weak, then our children will be weak. Our women will be weak and everything about us will be weak. You notice how other groups don't come in here like that. They, they come in there, all, have their own codes, stick together. Their families stick together. They don't care about no validation for them folks. They want to do for themselves. And then sometimes we get mad at these other groups, but let's call it what it is. We are our own problem on that area of worshiping them people. You think Asians would be up here hugging a uh, 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 Amber Geiger for killing one of their people? Do you think the Arabs would have done that? Shoot, you think even maybe the Somalis, you think they would have been hugging them? No. We got to have a fundamental change in our mindset as black people. Are we different? Yes, we all different people. Nobody's a monolith, but come on, man. Worshiping them people like the way we, we worship them people. We worship them. Let's call it what it is. We worship them. And I'll say it as a collective. I ain't talking about me. We talking about we as a collective of people and it shows in our actions. You talk about banking black and they say, well, that's racist. You even responded to them. That shows a lot. When we talk, when they talk about their issues, they don't hear nothing about you and what you have to say. They don't care what you have to say. When other groups talk about their issues, they don't want you in their conversation. But black folks, we, well, we don't mean this. We mean that. If you say we created hip hop, we did this, we did that. That's our culture. No, you're, I, no, that's for everybody. That's being racist. That's for everybody. And you will sit up there and let them tell you that. And you'll be explaining. Like they're your mama. See, I'm talking about the, the fundamental things that black people do that, that other groups don't do. Yes, racism, white supremacy is a real thing, but we have to tighten up on our culture, our group. We have to fall in love again with black people ourselves. No matter who you are, who you with, whatever. At the end of the day, you're black. You're by yourself, you're married, you're single. Whoever you're married to, if you're walking in this skin, you're black. And no person you're married to, you're not married to, or whatever gonna save you from it. But let's not see too many videos like this, please. Can we not see too many videos like this? Please. Please, can we not see too many videos like this? Can we see not too many Judge Kemp's anymore hugging murderers? Can we please stop seeing that? Lord, my, my blood pressure and it probably raised up today talking about this situation. But the, 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 the positive thing, let me, let me talk about some positives here. Things are changing slowly but surely. We're growing, we're getting more connected with each other. We are appreciating our culture here. We're getting connected globally. So let's continue that and not focus so much on, you know, like I said, we do got some issues we do need to fix and black America do need to fix that. The Caribbeans need to fix that. 
Africans need to fix that. Cause like I said, when I put that Ken Gonda video up over here and it was talking about dating white people, y'all eyes was looking the same way. So mesmerized and lost. And that was in Uganda. So like I said, it's the same issue. And in some parts of Africa, it's worse than here. White folks show up and oh my God, oh, the white people are here. You get what I'm saying? That's why they don't stay out of Africa. And I will show you on my camera how they don't stay out of Africa. How they gonna be right where I'm at when I'm in Kenya, enjoying themselves. But then some of y'all say, I ain't going over there. Man, the white people don't stay out of Africa. Well, the world is worshiping. Okay. Well, you don't be like the world then. You say it's world worshiping the group. No, other people playing the game. The Chinese not worshiping them people. The Chinese trying to get in when they feel so they can be the next superpower. That's what the Chinese is trying to do. These other groups trying to get in when they feel they playing the game. Even these immigrants, I'm telling you about these immigrants. They coming in here and playing the game. And, and, and they'll make them think that they friend. They're not really being friends with them, but they'll do anything they can to play the game to get what they want. But see, we don't play the game for what it is. And a few of us that are playing the game and understand how to do things and make moves and make things happen, we don't do it. Or we think someone's cooning when they're really not. They're playing the game and possibly getting some things for us so we could handle different things. But ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I'm not going to keep ranting and raving here tonight. I know you guys are busy. I want to thank everyone that's joined us tonight. I mean, we have a well, little, you know, little four, four to 600 people. Appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Um, let's reflect on this, reflect on it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're on here for the first time, subscribe. We have a lot of uh, content for you. Um, we also going to be going to an orphanage as I stated before, um, in Mombasa, uh, to visit the kids. And I was thinking that possibly if we could, um, do maybe a small crowdfunding for in the orphanage while we over there and bring something to them, um, just to help out. Cause these are kids that don't have a place to stay. And it, this is, um, you know, actually two people, they are, um, you know, run an orphanage and they are pastors at the same time, but we want to go there and, you know, Hey, like say, well, we give goes a long way over there than definitely over here. So we're, uh, probably, you know, talk about doing that maybe in the next few days or so, um, just so we could, you know, cause we taken off to go into Kenya on the, well, I believe on the 14th. So, um, but we, our plane actually leaves the 15th. So it'll be in the next few days or so. So we probably put that up. If you guys like to, you know, help out on that. Um, we would greatly appreciate that. So thank you guys for listening, rocking with us. I get upset cause I care. I get upset because I know we could be better. And I know that love that we're giving to the wrong people should be directed at us. And we need more love than any other group in this country due to the hell that we all have endured. And we got to get that love. Um, and yes, black love is important, but it needs to be expanded way out of just relationships and benefiting you. We talking about a global black love where tribalism doesn't exist. Uh, borders doesn't exist. Even I like what Julius Malema said, about the no border situation. We need to be that way with all of us. And that's the same thing. When I go over there, I'm gonna tell them the same thing. Love your brother. Stop all this mess. Cause we have so much love for these folks. 